Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Three people are displaced after a Friday afternoon house fire that tore through a Sunny Slope residence. A lower income housing project in Grant County is among those receiving a historic amount of state funding. Wet and warmer weather this week with temperatures in the 40s this weekend. All the details coming up in your local weather forecast. The Wenatchee School District will close Columbia Elementary School and plans to consolidate its elementary schools beginning in the 2024-25 school year. The announcement came on Saturday morning after district officials met with Columbia staff to discuss the move at a Friday staff meeting. The district says the decision was made as a quote, result of declining enrollment and the need to optimize resources in the face of significant budget constraints. As for the students and teachers, Wenatchee School District says they will be reassigned to neighboring schools in the district. More information will be released at tomorrow's school board meeting where there will be a presentation on the reasoning for the closure behind the action and a financial report. Three people are displaced after a Friday afternoon house fire that tore through a Sunny Slope residence. The fire was reported just before 4.30 p.m. in the 3400 block of McMullen Road, just north of Wenatchee. The Wenatchee Valley Fire Department says no one was injured and all three residents, plus their cat, were safely relocated. Investigators are still probing the cause of that fire. The Housing Authority of Chelan County failed to conduct a competitive bid process before awarding about $420,000 in renovation contracts. That's the finding from the Washington State Auditor's Office. In 2021, the Low Income Housing Administration collected bids on rehab work at Chelan Garden Apartments, but the lower bidder eventually pulled out. The Housing Authority then changed its bid specifications and asked for new bids from other contractors who originally sought to do the work rather than starting a new bidding process. That conflicts with federal housing fund regulations. The housing agency admitted it made a mistake and says it's implemented new training and hired an outside advisor to avoid future missteps. For years, the Leavenworth Winter Sports Club has hosted Chicks on Sticks, a just-for-fun cross-country race that benefits women's cancer research and support. In 2022, longtime ski coach Barb Kelly succumbed to cancer, and on Saturday, the race was held in her honor. Organizers also renamed a section of the trail Barb's Loop in recognition of her work for ski programs. NCW Life News was there for the event, which this year benefited Wellness Place in Wenatchee. I've uh, done chicks on sticks kind of throughout my entire childhood. I remember coming out as a kid dressed up in all pink and the full costume and just doing the little loop. And then as I got older, like in high school, there was a chunk of time where there's like, there's a bunch of women in their like 40s and 50s who are very competitive. So I'd come out and I'd be racing and be like me and my mom and a couple of her friends all duking it out. So yeah, it's always been a fun fun community event. She never organized it, but always raced in it. Skiing was always like one of her passion things. She started skiing in high school back in Minnesota and then went to college in Montana and skied there. And then when she moved out here, started skiing and got involved with the Nordic team probably around the time I started. So like 2005 and then slowly got more and more involved and then coached for a number of years and continued coaching even after I was out of the program. She was really just a wonderful person and really loved her community and was always putting in more work for her community. She even up until the end, even when she was in the hospital, she was like thinking about fundraisers for the ski team and different things like that. So she really just like cared about finding the community. She also just like loved the kids. Her favorite group to coach was always the middle schoolers because they were at the point where they weren't super serious about racing yet, but they had a lot of enthusiasm. And she just like really loved that, that youthful enthusiasm. The costuming is a big part of it. I feel like I, this is the only pink thing I could find. So I feel like I failed a little bit with costuming today, but yeah, it's always, yeah, fun event. Everyone gets dressed up for it. It's about a four kilometer loop and it goes out along the canal and then you get like a nice view up to Sleeping Lady 
on a clear day and then it goes down and like along the river meanders by the river and then loops back up here to this meadow that we're in. But my first time when I was like seven or eight, it was a big deal for me to be able to come and ski the entire front loop and the entire back loop. And so now that this is a trail dedicated to that super special. And then I also have a necklace that Siri Healy, who's also local. I have a sleeping lady necklace that my mom gave me when I graduated high school that I've always worn. And so a sleeping lady's always been a special thing I've connected with her. So now that there's a trail back here and a bench looking up at sleeping lady that it's really special for me. When we come back, a Washington Senate bill to make educational curricula more inclusive of LGBTQ and other marginalized groups passed into the House last week. And six local celebrities competed in Dancing with the Wenatchee Stars on Saturday at the Numerica Performing Arts Center to raise money for nonprofits. We'll tell you who danced away with the top prize coming up. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. In Digital Media Arts program, we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands-on learning experience. Shoot, I think I left my keys in the kitchen. Can you grab them? Yep. Find them? What's this? It's a locking bag. It keeps Grandma's medication safe. But I could just take it. Well, for one thing, it locks. And if it were gone, I'd know there's a problem. Huh. Well played. Help prevent opioid misuse before it starts. Visit GetTheFactsRx.com. A lower income housing project in Grant County is among those receiving a historic amount of state funding. The Washington Department of Commerce announced yesterday more than $312 million in housing trust awards. That's the largest annual funding round in the program's history, aimed at creating more than 3,900 units around the state. A Catholic Charities project to build 93 low-income housing units in Quincy will receive about $4.75 million in trust grants. Washington Commerce Director Mike Fong says the state still has work to do to catch up to the housing demand. Given our growth uh, trajectory, over the next 20 years, we're looking at a need of 1.1 million new homes uh, to meet uh, future growth. And uh, at the same time, we have dug deep and to understand where that growth is expected to happen. And our assessment is provides, you know, every county uh, across the state with uh, projected targets based on different income levels as far as what those needs might be. You know, uh, going down the list from Adams to Yakima County, all 39 have specific targets from us as far as what those future needs uh, look like. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, is that we've got, we've got work to do. You know, we're not there and on the current uh, level of uh, housing production, uh, we're going we're gonna to fall short. And that is only going to exacerbate the housing crisis that we're facing today. A Washington Senate bill to make educational curricula more inclusive of LGBTQ and other marginalized groups passed into the House last week. Republicans, including 12th District Senator Brad Hawkins, have opposed the Senate Bill 5462, saying it removes control from local school districts to build their own educational programs. Hawkins introduced an amendment last session to make the requirements voluntary, but it was voted down. He addressed the Senate before the vote on Wednesday, which was 29 to 19 in favor of passage. This isn't just simply, sort of as a prime sponsor mentioned, suggesting to school districts that they consider. No, this is a mandate on all 295 different school districts. And to be clear, Mr. President, school districts are their own local governments, like cities and counties. Sure, they get a lot of funding from the state, but they also get funding at the local level, 
at the federal level, and they are overseen by their locally elected school board members and administered by their school superintendents. But it just seems like the trend is to take more and more discretion away from the local communities and force feed stuff from the legislature onto all 295 school districts. Six local celebrities competed in Dancing with the Wenatchee Stars on Saturday at the New America Performing Arts Center to raise money for nonprofits. Top Rojana Stian took home the coveted Mirror Ball Trophy. Top is a Wenatchee City Council member and the owner of Atlas Fair Restaurant. He performed a 90-second routine to the Austin Powers theme song with a dance partner from the Utah Ballroom Dance Company before being voted the winner by the audience. His participation in the competition Petition raised money for the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council. Mission Ridge Ski Patrol Director Delcy Prophet plays second. Coming up next in tonight's feature story, Eastmont Superintendent Becky Berg sat down with NCW Life's Jordan Gonzalez to break down how the school board decided to mold a $117 million bond with no tax rate increase around the community needs. Wet and warmer weather on tap this week, and I'll have all those details coming up in your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why people here drive Honda. Dependable all-wheel drive with traction control with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to fill up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda is known for legendary fuel efficiency? Great deals are here now, and so is Mr. Frost. So see your Inland Northwest Honda dealer today. Honda can handle it. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. A 2022 Eastmont school construction bond aimed to fix a lot. They wanted to modernize their elementary schools, update their athletic facilities, and build a new transportation center. The $185 million bond went on to fail during the November election as it was unable to meet the 60% supermajority threshold needed to pass with only 51% of voters approving the measure. The Eastmont School Board went to work to figure out what the community wanted. Now they're trying again. In tonight's feature story, Superintendent Becky Berg sat down with NCW Life's Jordan Gonzalez to break down how the board decided to mold a $117 million bond one Eastmont says has no tax increases around the community needs. At Cascade and Kenroy Elementary Schools, students walk outside to get from one place to the next. At Lee Elementary, the 5th and 6th grade classes are all held in outdoor portables. At Rock Island Elementary, the roof needs to be replaced. The four schools are named in a school construction bond that would modernize Cascade, Kenroy, and Lee, and Rock Island would not only have a new roof, but a single point of entry. Additionally, a portion of the bond would allow for safety, security, and accessibility upgrades at all schools. All of these things were what members of the community told the district they thought were the most important. We've enjoyed a rich legacy in Eastmont of voter support um, and just an all around um, support of our kids. So I think that showed in the last bond, we just didn't get the heavy lift to 60%. Um, when we asked voters why they voted the way they do, did and didn't have any input for us, most of them said the scope of the bond was too broad and the price tag was too high. The four kind of anchor schools are still the four anchor schools in this upcoming bond. They're our oldest schools, so they are Rock Island, Cascade, Kenroy, and Lee. Um, so we'll totally modernize the th three, and then Rock Island will do some major upgrades. Uh, in the last bond, we also had a new transportation center. We had athletic upgrades. We had additions to Sterling Junior High. 
Um, we had safety upgrades, but the safety upgrades remain in this new pond. Over 900 people participated in an online thought exchange, which helped the district better understand what the top priorities were for voters. It was determined that Cascade, Kenroy, and Lee schools were the most in need of rebuilding, and Rock Island also needed work done. Participants agreed the athletics facilities needed upgrades, but not through increasing taxes. The transportation center was also deemed a nice-to-have and not an immediate need. Still, the district was able to make some improvements. We did really when the bond didn't pass is we asked the community for input and we took very close um, inventory of our facilities and decided what really can't wait. Um, if it's student safety, it couldn't wait, not in general, but um, if we have a buckling floor or something that kids are tripping over, something like that, we had to fix those. So um, since there were no athletics during COVID, we had um, a few hundred thousand dollars left in athletics reserve that we were able to resurface the track with. The track really needed it. Kids were um, getting hurt, twisting body parts and ankles and things. So we're happy about that. And then the board decided to take a little bit out of reserve. Um, every district needs a rainy day fund. We, we have to have a few months of payroll. We have to have a few months of everything. Uh, it would be irresponsible to the taxpayer not to. But the board decided to take a little chunk of that out to buy the lights at the high school. Um, and then we are addressing the needs of Eastmont Junior High's gym floor that has buckled with water. Moving forward, all eyes will be on the February 13th special election where voters will determine the fate of the schools. I hope that the community feels like we've responded to their needs and their wants and they are the, they're the um, kind of custodians of this asset. Uh, these are their buildings um, and so we need to reflect their values. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a fantastic weekend, a little more snow, some misty rain showers over the weekend, but I'm sure you felt the warmer temperatures too, especially yesterday. We had even more of that today, but we also had a lot of these low hanging clouds, a little bit of light slushy snow overnight, and then some rain showers during the day today. And now we're even seeing a little bit of patchy fog out there that began to develop this afternoon, and that will be in our forecast cast right through the week and we will also see periods of valley rain maybe mixed with a little bit of accumulating snow at times but then that'll melt off because our temperatures are going to warm up we're talking mid 30s to low 40s as we make our way through the week and then in the low 40s as we get into the upcoming weekend so wet and warm for our rest of our week ahead today 35 degrees and that's exactly where we should be for this time of year 50 50 is our record high that was set in 2011. 30 our overnight low this morning, five degrees above 25. That's our normal low, six below our record, and that was set in 1969. 24 hour precipitation, 12 one hundredths of an inch, and that gets us to 63 hundredths of an inch now since January 1st, and we're less than a tenth now below where we should be for precipitation. A few more inches of snow, too, now gets us to 24 inches, and that's for the winter season, which goes back to October 1st of 2023. Sunrise 738 this morning and the sun set this afternoon at 447. All right, here's your Tuesday temperatures and you can see we're starting to warm up. 37s in the Columbia Basin for Moses Lake and Afreda, and then a lot of 38s on the map. Quincy, Wenatchee, also Kashmir, Eniat, a little bit warmer in Chelan and up into Omak with temperatures near 40 degrees tomorrow. Even a nice one up in Lake Wenatchee tomorrow above freezing with a high expected around 35 degrees. Tonight we can expect mostly cloudy skies. You can just see the edge of an area of low pressure that is moving in. Here's the trough that's pulling through the state right now and there's that fog that we are expecting. Patchy fog all over Washington State. That'll be overnight tonight with lows mild in the mid 30s. For Tuesday mostly cloudy. Just a slight chance of rain showers as this area of low pressure gets a little bit closer Closer to the coast, we will see temperatures tomorrow in the upper 30s, so it should be beautiful. That's going to feel awfully nice after our cold snap on Wednesday. Cloudy skies, and there's that big old area of low pressure. It's going to bring rain showers during our morning commute, and here you go when you get off work on Wednesday. It's just going to be a wet one throughout the day with highs just cooling back on Wednesday into the mid 30s. But as we get closer into the end of the week, then cloudy skies, another storm 
set to move in. High pressure though, another nice ridge will be over us on Thursday. That'll keep us nice and mild as well with high temperatures on Thursday in the upper 30s to uh, near 40 degrees. For Friday, cloudy skies. That storm system pushes on shore. Not so much in the morning. It'll be mainly evening rain showers. High temperatures again in the upper 30s for Friday. Getting you into the upcoming weekend, we do expect cloudy skies to kick off our weekend and probably a wet one too. Not a lot of rain showers during the day, but later on in the afternoon on Saturday, there we go. A good chance that we'll see the wet stuff. Highs again on Saturday in those upper 30s to near 40 degrees. And then finishing up our weekend, there's the storm that will move through on Saturday. There's our new weather maker as it continues to move east. We'll see about a 30% chance of rain on Sunday, and it's going to be nice with high temperatures in the low 40s. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast. 34 degrees overnight tonight, so we're going to drop one whole degree for our overnight low. Just some scattered showers for Tuesday and 38. A better chance for rain on Wednesday. We'll see about an 80% chance of the wet stuff in 36. And then nice warm up as we get into the end of the week. Isolated showers Thursday and 39. And then a good chance for rain both Friday and Saturday. 38 Friday, 40 your high on Saturday. Saturday, and then by Sunday, mostly cloudy, a 30% chance of the wet stuff with high temperatures around 41 degrees. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Dan Koontz and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. There's no place like home because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories, and we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Want to take me to the sports update? Austin Matthews scored his NHL leading 38th goal last night. Unfortunately, Mr. Matthews, plays for the Toronto Maple Leafs and Toronto knock off the Kraken last night at Climate Pledge Arena. The final was 3-1. to one. He's had a tough time getting his confidence all season. In front, a tangle and a beautiful goal by the NHL's leading goal getter, Austin Matthews. 12.54 left to go, period one. Toronto breaks the ice. Well, Riker Evans leaves the front of the net, anticipating that he was going to get this puck. But Marner beats him to it. Once he leaves the front of the net, that leaves Matthews all by himself. And oh my, what a play by the leading goal scorer in the National Hockey League. Bracken kill is over. Bertuzzi, Domi. In front they score, Nick Robertson. 17.09 left to go in the second period, 2-0 Toronto. Moves the puck up quickly, nice little sauce pass here to Domi. Able to just get that puck around right here. Domi, they got a sliding Dumlin going through, and it's Robertson on the back post. Back of the goal is Tomas Tatar. He'll elude two checkers, cycle out with it, turn, shoot it. Off bodies, it's loose, they score! Jordan Everly right on the spot. He picks up the loose change and gets that big goal. The Kraken cut the lead in half. Puts it into the wide open net. Watch the play by Tatar below the goal line. He says, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to work. I'm going to get to the middle. I'm going to fire to the net. I'm going to find a way to get it there. And then the pass from McCann to Everly. Beautiful play. Well, just so smooth, too, the way Everly pulls that puck backhand. Forehand right there, snapping it through. And Continuing his point streak to three games now. Eight seconds left. Tolbin and slams it in. Goes all the way around. McCabe's on it. He takes a peek. It's a 200 footer. Center cut. Jake McCabe. 20.2 seconds left. Three to one. Toronto. They're still without the services. The crack and Matty Beneers is out. He is injured. Yanni Gord is serving a two game suspension. Vitz Dunn is out with injuries, so they are a little shorthanded. Next up for the Seattle Kraken, the Blackhawks come to town Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You can watch that 
on TNT. Men's college basketball on Saturday, kind of a mixed bag for the local teams. Gonzaga, no problems with San Diego 105 to 63. Husky men took one on the chin down at the farm. Stanford got the better part of them. Cougars went to overtime, but then they didn't show up. Cal beat Washington State on Saturday and Eastern Washington took care of Idaho State. Women's college basketball on Saturday. Number 17 Gonzaga rolls right along, rolled over St. Mary's 89 to 60. Eastern Washington completes the sweep over Idaho State. And at Women's College of Basketball on Sunday, again a mixed bag. Arizona State knocked off the Lady Huskies, but it was the Cougars over the Wildcats. Local sports. And now the Les Schwab scoreboard from over the weekend. We'll start with Friday. Of course, as you know by now, we we're supposed to do the West Valley Wenatchee girls game. West Valley didn't make the trip. That game will be has been rescheduled for one week from tomorrow. Elsewhere, Ellensburg still can't lose a game. I think it's like 70 some odd victories in a row for the Lady Bulldogs. They beat Sela on Friday night. Okanagan over Bridgeport. That's not a typo. Okanagan 80, Bridgeport girls two. Brewster over Liberty Bell, Tenasket over Oroville, Lake Roosevelt beat Manson, Waterville Mansfield over Proteris, and Wilson Creek knocked off Moses Lake Christian. For the boys on Friday, again, West Valley Wenatchee didn't get going. They'll play one week from tomorrow. Ellensburg beat Sela, Okanagan over Bridgeport, not quite the ladies' score, but still an easy victory there. Liberty Bell over Brewster, Tenasket boys over Oroville, it was Lake Roosevelt over Manson, Waterville Mansfield beat Proteris, and Moses Lake Christian rolled over Wilson Creek. To Saturday we go. We were supposed to do the Eastmont Davis doubleheader. Davis couldn't make the trip. That has also been rescheduled for next week. Moses Lake got the better part of the Wenatchee girls by 10. It was Ellensburg over Prosser. East Valley beat Afreda. Lake Roosevelt over Lakeside. Brewster rolled over Liberty Spangle. It was the Liberty Bell girls over Cascade 55 to 14. Okanagan defeated Davenport and Waterville Mansfield. No problems with Soap Lake 70 to 17 in girls basketball on Saturday. Boys basketball on Saturday. Again, Davis and Eastmont didn't get going. Uh, they'll be playing that next week. Moses Lake beat Wenatchee. Prosser over Ellensburg. It was the East Valley boys over Afreda. Lake Roosevelt beat Lakeside. Brewster over, the, over Liberty Spangle and boys basketball on Saturday night. Liberty Bell beat Cascade. Davenport over Okanagan. And Soap Lake got by Waterville Mansfield. As far as the Wenatchee Wild was concerned, a mixed bag over the weekend. All three goals Saturday night scored in the first period within about two and a half minutes. Over 4,200 people on hand at the Town Toyota Center on Saturday night. Fourth largest crowd in franchise history, but Spokane wins two to one. Yesterday, everybody scored, it seems that way. Eight different wild players scored. They scored early, they scored often, and they scored in between. And after three straight home losses, they rout Seattle in Kent. The final was nine to three. The wild return home Wednesday night to take on the Tri-City Americans at six o'clock. And then there were four after the divisional playoffs over the weekend of the National Football League. On Saturday, Baltimore, no problems. They beat Houston 34 to 10, and San Francisco beat a new team, Green Ball, <clears throat> 24 to 21. Yesterday, can you believe it? The Lions are one game away from the Super Bowl. They beat Tampa Bay 31 to 23, and Kansas City knocked off Buffalo, because they always do, 27 to 24. So we are set. It is Conference Championship Sunday, the early game for the AFC Championship and the Lamar Hunt Trophy, Kansas City and Baltimore, noon on CBS. Then for the George Hallis Trophy for the NFC Championship, Detroit and San Francisco at 3.30 on Fox. And Super Bowl LVIII, sometimes called Super Bowl 58, February 11th in Las Vegas. Real quick on the prep basketball schedule today, a couple of non-leaguers, including Sultan at Kashmir. And that's sports. On Tuesday's edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley, talking wild hockey, we do it once a week with Austin Drade. Three home games, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And Austin on the agenda is? Tri-City on Wednesday, Seattle on Friday, Prince George on Sunday. Very busy week in the Wolves' Den, but a lot of promotions coming up and uh, some very good hockey coming off a very nice win in Seattle on Sunday. Austin Drade, the broadcasting voice of the Wenatchee Wild, making his first appearance on local television on tomorrow's edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.